One of the powerful building blocks of Node is the HTTP module that we use for creating networking applications. For example, we can create a web server that listens for HTTP requests on a given port. And with this, we can easily create a backend service for our client applications, like a web application that we build with React or Angular, or a mobile application running on a mobile device. So once again, back in the Node documentation, in the list of modules, you can find this HTTP module. In this module, you can see various classes like HTTP.agent, HTTP.clientRequest, and so on. Each of these classes has a bunch of properties, methods, and events. So back in VS Code, let's load the HTTP module. So constant HTTP, we set it to require HTTP. Okay. Now here we can call HTTP dot create server. This is one of the functions defined in this module. And with this, we can create a web server. So let's store the result in a server object. Now what is interesting is that this server is an event emitter. So it has all the capabilities of event emitter that you saw earlier in this section. So look server dot we have the on method or add listener or emit and so on. Also, if you look at the documentation for the HTTP module, on this page you can see HTTP.server class. Here the documentation says that this class inherits from net.server. So this is another class defined in the net module. Let's have a look. Now here the documentation says that net.server is an event emitter. So that's why I said a bunch of Node's core functionality is based on event emitter. So back to our server object, now we can call server dot listen and give it a port. Let's say port 3000. Now following that, I'm going to add a console.log saying listening on port 3000. Okay. Now when we run this application, this server will listen on port 3000. As I told you before, every time there is a new connection or new request, this server raises an event. So we can use the on method to handle that event. So before listening, we want to register a listener or a handler. So server dot on. The name of the event is connection that you can find in the documentation. So you don't have to memorize any of this stuff. Okay. And the second argument is a callback function or the actual listener. As you can see in the tooltip here, this listener is a function with one argument that is socket of type socket class and it returns void. So here we have the arrow function syntax in ES6. So let's add an arrow function that takes a socket and goes to this code block. Now here we can simply lock something on the console. New connection. Now back in the terminal, let's run this application. You can see we are listening on port 3000. Now back in the browser, let's head over to localhost port 3000. And now if you look in the terminal, you can see we have a new connection here. So you can see this server object raises different kinds of events that you can respond to. Now in real world applications, we are not going to respond to the connection event to build an HTTP service. This is very low level. So let's delete this. What we commonly do is we pass a callback function to this create server method. So function, this function takes two parameters, request and response. Or we can use the arrow function syntax. So we remove the function keyword and add this fat arrow here. Now in this function, instead of working with a socket, we can work with the actual request or response objects. So we can check if request.url equals slash. Then we can send something to the client. For example, response.write hello world. And then we end the response. Okay. Now 
back in the terminal. We can exit here by pressing Ctrl and C and then run the application again. Okay, we're still listening on port 3000. Let's refresh this page. So we got Hello World on the homepage. Now, if you want to build a backend service for our web or mobile applications, we need to handle various routes here. For example, we can have another if block, if request.url equals slash API slash courses. Perhaps here we want to return the list of courses from the database. So we would do something like this, response dot write. Now here we want to return an array of objects using JSON. So we use JSON dot stringify and give it an array of objects. Now for simplicity here, we don't have to worry about the database or complex objects. Let's just return an array of numbers, one, two, and three. So we pass this to json.stringify, which will convert this array into a string using JSON syntax, and then we'll write it to the response. And finally, response.end. Now, back in the terminal, we need to stop this process again and run it one more time. Now, in the future, I will show you how we can automate this so every time we make a simple change to our application, we don't have to restart it. So, now back in the browser, if we go to slash API slash courses, we get an array with three numbers. So as you see, building a web server with Node is very easy. Now, in the real world, we are not going to use this HTTP module to build a backend service for our application. The reason for this is because, as you can see here, as we add more routes, this code gets more complex because we add all of them in a linear way inside this callback function. So instead, we use a framework called Express, which gives our application a clean structure to handle various routes. Internally, the Express framework is built on top of the HTTP module in Node. Hi guys, it's Mosh here. Thank you for watching my Node tutorial. I just wanted to let you know that this video you've been watching is part of my complete Node course where you will learn everything about Node from the basic to the advanced topics. If you're serious about learning Node, I highly recommend you to enroll in my Node course because this is much faster than jumping from one tutorial to another. It saves you time. Plus, you're going to get a lot of exercises that will prepare you for the real world. And also, at the end of the course, you'll receive a certificate of completion that you can provide to your current or future employer. So if you want to enroll, click on the link in the video description. I hope to see you in the course.